So today we're going to talk about a subject that I've just spent the last couple of years working on, and that's poultry. This is part of the legacy of turning stones that I've actually done over the last several decades. I started uh, many years ago with the clothing industry to show you that clothing can drape you in disease-causing fabric that's made out of oil and deadly chemicals. We went down to the supplement industry and exposed that over 90% of supplements on the market globally today are in fact highly dangerous to take and may promote and create disease and further your disease. We're, we're advocates of healthy whole food based supplementation. We went to the fish industry and the fish oil industry and showed you this is one of the biggest frauds precipitated in the history of man on uh, supplements which are actually crazy but fish is even crazier. Uh, fish oil actually we know for positive promotes cardiovascular arrest, heart attacks and stroke. We know that it creates cancer. We went down to the dairy industry and we showed you that dairy is the number one cause of cancer and in fact creates coronary arrest, diabetes and as a young person if you drink it your likelihood of contracting many forms of cancer as you get older go up two to four times. Isn't that interesting? And today we're going to speak about poultry. Now when I was a little boy growing up uh, here in the United States everyone's aspiration was to have enough money to eat steak. So when a family could have steak on the table dad felt he had done his job and Mom was happy because she was just in there frying that steak up and little boys and girls were happy smiling at the table. And somewhere around the 1970s, a handful of renegades started to question that paradigm. They started to say, wait a minute, how come Uncle Joe died and Dad died and Mary across the street died? And, and nobody was really willing to look at the truth but they knew that something was wrong. As Shakespeare would have said, something was stinky in this process. <laughs> so it almost organically governed by the poultry industry morphed into eat poultry because it's not steak. And so the mindset globally has become that poultry is a much better choice than red meat and the fact is that poultry has more animal saturated fat than does red meat and that's only the beginning the tip of the iceberg and at one point people would have been embarrassed if they ate a chicken because that meant they didn't have any money isn't that interesting now most of you know how successful fast food industries have been globally and we here in the United States export a lot of things, but probably the most notorious thing that we've exported is the fast food industry. Uh, when I lived in Europe a long time ago, uh, I really didn't find that there. Now, everywhere I go, there is an American fast food company smack in the middle of renowned historic sites all over the world. And I didn't know that the industry had become so absolutely influential that the chicken selling part of the fast food industry is actually far more economically successful than is McDonald's. Isn't that interesting? Did you know that? I was really surprised when I started a couple of years ago looking at this. So as big a name as McDonald's is, there's many, many chicken pushing fast food people that are actually more successful than that. So this has been an incredibly successful ploy by the poultry industry that has actually captured the imagination of the mindset of humanity worldwide so that you justify eating these poor little birds because they happen not to be steak. Now what's really interesting, I think part of this has to do with size. And when you are an animal food consumer, in a way you're a bully. Isn't it true? And bullies don't like to pick on big guys like steers. You ever go out and fight a steer? 
How many of you, if you had to go and fight a steer for your meal, how many of you would do it? Probably nobody here, because <laughs> I'm going to tell you, steers are pretty tough. But if you're a bully consuming the flesh of another creature, chickens are easy to beat up. Turkeys are easy to beat up. Ducks are easy to beat up. And so in a way, they're little, so they're not really meat. And I think that there's a mindset that goes on like that. And you have all of this folklore that goes on around things like chicken soup. Chicken soup is penicillin. What kind of crazy stuff is that? Like who wants to take penicillin to begin with? <laughs> Although penicillin was a great finding, I'll tell you, mold on a bread. So let's explore this a little bit deeper now. It's really, really, really weird when you start to think about how we come to these conclusions. Is poultry a food? And this is what it actually looks like. What you're seeing is a conveyor belt when little chicklets are born. And this brings back a whole lot of emotions to me because when I was a little guy right here in the New York City area, every Easter, every Easter, we would get one of these chicklings. How many of you are old enough to remember that? Hmm. And we didn't think anything of it. It was like a toy for us. So every family I knew would go out and get these little chicklings and play with them until they died, just like the turtle or just like the fish. And nobody thought much of it. It was just sort of a playmate that you had temporarily. And when Easter was over, you were disenchanted. You were waiting until another holiday came up and something else happened. Well, the most notorious part of this is Domesticated fowl collectively, especially those valued for their meat and eggs as chickens, turkeys, ducks, geese, and guinea fowl, is the description of what poultry is. So look at this. Immediately when you look up what the name poultry means, it's a product. These are products. They have no concept that these are little creatures that have mothers, that have fathers, that have a pecking order. Matter of fact, where do you think the word pecking order came from? So humans use that all the time. Why? Because there is an innate intelligence within poultry that we completely disregard. Because if we start to think that these little creatures love and they feel, they have empathy, they have compassion, they have intelligence, they actually have a hierarchical society, they actually work together, then it would be a little bit harder for you as a bully to wring their neck. And that's exactly what happens with little boy chicklings. Because it's almost always better to be a boy in this male-dominated society. How many of you women would agree with that? Raise your hand. <laughs> this is the one place you don't want to be a boy. Because if you're a little boy chicklet, they kill you. So they actually take them and they kill them. They throw them in a big bin and they grind that up. And they use it for feed to feed other animals. And that's what happens to little boy chickens. How many of you knew that until I just told that to you? So at least two of you, three of you in this room. And you, you're supposed to be the enlightened worldwide. If you didn't know that, shame on you. Because you could tell your family, by the way, you're wringing the neck of little chicklings. <laughs> so it's really, really weird. This is what it looks like. Because when you disarm the entire process by thinking that these are products, it's much easier to wring the necks and pull all the feathers out. And how they do that, by the way, you think nobody sits there and picks it like you see in the old movies. They put it in a big barrel of acid. And that's on that conveyor belt what they're doing. So going down the row, they dip it, dip it in acid and all the poor little feathers fall off. And sometimes, by the way, they're moving at that point. You may have seen the pictures where when they chop a chicken's head off, it still runs around a little bit. Well, that's exactly what's happening on the conveyor belt. We are lured into believing fowl is not meat, but healthy food. This is healthy food? You'd have to be out of your mind to think this is food to begin with, and healthy food, you're really out of your mind. That's the point you need to be walked into the insane asylum at that point. But it seems like the mass population of the world think this is healthy food. Recently, Chick-fil-A one of the most successful fast food restaurants, more profitable, listen to this, more profitable than McDonald's, and they are closed one day a week. McDonald's is open seven days a week. They're open six days a week. They have more stores in this country and now spreading around the world than does McDonald's, 
and they make more money than McDonald's. Why? Because it's healthy food. And they know that, and they know the mindset of the public, and they know what you feel, and they know what your sentiment is, because you really don't want to change. And it's little, and you're a bully, and you'll kill the thing. So here's what they propose. This restaurant promoted chicken as a health food and encouraged consumers to eat pounds every day. I will repeat what I said. Pounds for the people listening around the world is, for instance, at least a half a kilo to a kilo. So a half a kilo to a kilo of chicken a day because it's going to make you stronger, healthier, and you live longer. Now, completely the opposite of the facts, completely the opposite of the truth, but when you're busy and you're working hard and you're stressed, you want to believe nonsense because everyone else believes nonsense and it's uncomfortable not to go along with the nonsense. Really uncomfortable. I don't eat red meat, so this is what I hear people say. Often when I'm lecturing, I say, you should be a plant-based eater. And they raise their hand, oh, I eat fish. How many of you know that fish is not a plant? <laughs> I eat chicken. It's not a plant. Maybe, I know that our educational system here, and certainly probably in many places in the globe, is not good, but I didn't know it was that bad. I mean, you really had to miss the entire first, second, and third year of biology to think a chicken's a plant. <laughs> Somehow, other forms of animal fare slipped under the radar in the public consciousness. So we just completely think it's perfectly fine. So words association. Listen to this one. Now this really reveals the truth. So over in Norway, uh, where seemingly, you know, they have a little compassion, they give the Nobel Prize, as my wife's country is Sweden does. They honor people for dignified things and moving humanity forward. Here we honor people in the United States for money. The guy with the most money, he's the toughest, the biggest, the smartest, and always the most corrupt. But we honor that. We honor that. So over the university there, they experimented to judge how terminology describing meat would affect people's choices. When the word beef and pork were placed on the menu with cow and pig, both empathy and disgust were heightened. So how about if you went to your local fine food restaurant all over the world where you live, and by the way, when you were about ready there with all of your family and friends to look at the menu, it said, by the way, you're going to eat a cow. What part of the cow? Do you want the real buttocks of the cow? Then you have to pay more money. Or do you want the less expensive one around the anal opening of the cow? Or if you happen to be in the low-income high-end restaurant. Maybe you want the leg of the cow. <laughs> but they'll give you a cow any way you want. And all at once, people got disgusted. The same people that walked in, parked their Mercedes, sipped their fine organic wine, and they basically said, oh, I'm eating a cow. I never knew that. I'm 68 years old, and I've never known I eat a cow. <laughs> How about if you said, you're eating a pig? That's even worse. Well, when I was young, that was called pork line. I never knew what a pork line was. I knew I loved the taste of it because it was pure fat. That's all I knew. I used to chew it. And I'd chew it. My, I think my jaws became bigger because of chewing pork line. And can you imagine what that is? If you happen to be Jewish or Christian, they've actually told you in the Bible not to eat that stuff. <laughs> that was 2,000 years ago. Get a look. But somehow you forgot that because... You don't eat pigs, and you don't eat cows. You eat steak, and you eat pork line. The world is really weird, isn't it? Meet your meat. Look at that cute little meat. We are taught that these highly social, intelligent creatures have no feelings or thoughts. Hmm. How come I was so close as a little boy before I was completely corrupted, loving the little chiclet that I was given every Easter that I fell in love with. But somehow when he died and I cried and my mother and father said, oh, that's okay, we'll get you another chiclet. So slowly but surely, the scars of callousness went over my heart and I no longer perceived this as a little living creature as I would a brother or a sister. I perceived it as something that I played with and something that I consumed. But in our house, we didn't consume a lot of it. 
Because when I was young, middle class people actually had enough money to eat the meat they wanted to eat, which was called red meat. Do you follow? We didn't have to eat that low income stuff called chicken. Now it's completely flipped. Completely flipped. On the contrary, they are sensitive to touch. These are facts. These are not opinions. I never give any opinions. I give facts that I can back up with my opinion, which is always stronger than the fact. <laughs> Possess imagination. These are tests that have been conducted globally on this. Have shown numerical abilities. Probably they're better than most of you on counting. <laughs> Think of that. They have perception, time perception. So they actually know what time of the day it is most often. You and I have to carry a watch. They probably get it instinctually. We've lost that instinct, obviously. They have memory, practice self-control, reasoning, and logic. They use 24 distinct vocalizations. So now we know they have a language. They communicate with one another. Not maybe, not possibly. This isn't Brian's opinion. This is something we know for sure. So we have scientists that literally have enough wisdom to say, let's really look at the social order and the communication between these creatures. They have unique personalities. How many of you ever around animals? How many of you recognize that they have unique personalities? 